This is the Soval SVO8, a large, blazing fast Core XY 3D printer based on the Voron 2.4, a popular open source kit. But is this 3D printer an affordable path to premium printing in an open source format, or just another forgettable machine? Let's get started. To kick things off, unboxing and assembling the SVO8 needs some pretty serious planning. The machine comes flat packed, but the box is incredibly dense and heavy. This is great for shipping efficiency, considering that the printer is quite large indeed, but it does require some careful planning. The assembly process for the SVO8 was surprisingly smooth, considering how complex this machine is, with four independent Z-axis units that slide into place, albeit a little bit awkwardly, before being secured in place with a few screws. Securing the pre-assembled core XY gantry into place is also pretty awkward. You need to angle it and slide it in carefully before securing it to the Z-axis mounts with hard to reach fasteners. The printer comes with Allen keys, which will work, but I recommend grabbing a decent screwdriver with hex bits to reach right into the corners, as this makes doing up the fasteners a lot easier. And then you add the screen, filament holder, and extruder. Attach some wires and, well, you're pretty much good to go. Overall, the process was way easier than I expected and much faster than assembling a kit full of parts. Soval claims that it takes about an hour to assemble and I'd agree with that estimate. The SVO8 comes equipped with a planetary geared extruder and hot end with a ceramic heater to enable the high flow rates needed when printing at speed. And it has this impressive looking print head with an inductive probe for adaptive bed mesh leveling plus nozzle offset using this touch point on the back of the print bed. The construction quality for the printer seems very good, though I've heard that some reviewers have gotten units with assembly and quality issues. In my case, the machine feels very well put together with custom aluminium extrusion for the uprights and top structure, linear rails on all axes including each independent z-axis, and this absolutely gigantic injection molded base with triangle details. Seriously, this one plastic part is possibly the largest I've seen on a printer to date, unless I count the injection molded monstrosities that Cheaty Tech put out. So, there's no question that the Soval SV08 is quite large. It has a print volume of 350 by 350 by 345 millimeters in the Z. And it puts it in a league above many other fast Core XY offerings on the market currently at an impressive price point, but more on that at the end. Prints are laid down on this large removable magnetic print bed which is coated with a rough, resilient coating. It says it's PEI, but it appears to be much tougher than your regular run-of-the-mill powder-coated PEI because, once again, I dove the nozzle into the print bed by overdoing the nozzle baby-stepping on my first test print, and you can't even tell the damaged print just peeled away, leaving a flawless surface behind. That's really impressive. I really love this sort of print surface because you don't need any additions to print PLA securely, it just sticks to the print bed when it's hot, and when it cools down it just releases, and if it needs a little bit of help, you can just flex the removable sheet and it pops away. I had zero issue with print adhesion on any of my PLA prints on this machine during my testing. Connectivity on the SVO8 is very important to cover, because on initial inspection, all you get is this basic mono LCD with click wheel interface. You can opt to upgrade to a nicer color touchscreen that plugs into the HDMI port on the side for 99 bucks, but honestly, once you get this machine set up over your network, you'll pretty much never use the interface again. Getting it connected to your network though is a pretty archaic process. You need to load onto a special file on the USB drive, your SSID and password, and then put that into the printer and it will boot up and connect to your network. And once it's done, you simply need to navigate to the assigned IP address either, either through any browser on the network or through the slicer like in the case of Orca Slicer, and from here you'll be greeted with this awesome interface where you can upload files to the printer remotely, you can choose to preheat or home the axes, and you can also check the print's progress through the built-in webcam. With that out of the way, let's fire some prints off. After running the bed level and nozzle height routines, it became pretty clear that Soval hasn't fine-tuned the calibration routines much yet. Some feel redundant or completely ignored when you fire the prints off. But that's certainly something that's easy to fix with future profile and firmware updates. However, I will say that these updates are more than likely going to come from the community rather than the company, knowing how these things tend to go. The printer came preloaded with a speed benching, and man, does it really show what this printer is capable of. It is 
blazing fast, but it's also crazy loud, with that cooling fan maxing out to try and cool the plastic coming out of the nozzle at rapid pace. That was the fan at max speed. Considering the quality of the print though, I'd say it does a really good job, and it's a far cry from the cooling fans that we've seen on Soval's previous printers of the past, when they just weren't very good. This thing, it's a jet turbine, it's loud, but it does the job. And yes guys, I've heard you loud and clear, my tables are wobbly and you're sick of it, so I've upgraded to this steel frame table with a thick wooden top, and even then there will be some wobble because my floor is carpet, and there's no getting away from how foamy and squishy that is. I do hope this helps because I get it, looking at a wobbly printer isn't very satisfying, but trust me, it doesn't affect print quality at all. In fact, I did a video some time ago showing that you could print with a printer hanging from the ceiling with little to no effect on your print quality. Doesn't matter if the printer's moving, in fact, it might actually help deaden some vibrations when printing at crazy speeds like this machine can do. Force slicing was done through Orca Slicer, which is a modified version of Bamboo Slicer, which in turn is based off Prusa Slicer. Complicated, I know, but it's a really capable slicer with tons of modern features and updates all the time. At time of recording, Serval has only provided two print profiles for the SV08 using PLA at the odd layer height choices of 0.18 and 0.2, somewhat redundant if you ask me, but I sent a few with a 0.15mm layer height modification and my preferred three perimeters and support cubic infill and they worked great. Even with these rudimentary profiles, my slightly tweaked 0.15mm profile yielded very impressive results off the SV08. For example, the clearance castle worked perfectly, including the drawbridge, which has very good bridging, and it shows that the cooling capability of the SV08 is very high. So high, in fact, that I was brave enough to throw the lattice cube torture test at this machine that a lot of these much faster 3D printers have been struggling to print in recent years, because of that cooling. Now granted the machine did slow down quite a lot from its top speed because of the small cross-sectional area of each layer, but it did still complete and it looks really good with just a little bit of wispy stringing, possibly caused by the hot end and the cooling fan speed or because of a little bit of moisture in the PLA. And then I tried some prints with this gorgeous rainbow pearlescent PLA from Soval themselves. And this, this dinosaur head just looks really cool in this shiny filament. Absolutely stunning. And I also did this Hexaspherocon. Some of you guys might re remember that from way back in the day. And again, it looks really good. But there is one noticeable issue on all of the prints, and that is a slight over extrusion on the topmost solid layers. You can see quite clearly in the Hexaspherocon at that top, you can see that it's actually over extruding in these macro photos. And also on this top plate for a little robot I made, you can see it's quite rough actually. And this is an issue with over extrusion. So I'm not sure if this needs to be tweaked in the printing profile or it's an issue with the actual firmware of the machine and some settings need to be tweaked there. But either way, it's just over extruding just a little bit on those top solid layers. And the print quality is pretty good, but this machine isn't the strongest when it comes to printing flexibles, uh, which is surprising compared to, for example, the SVO7 that actually printed flexibles actually quite a bit better than the extruder setup on this machine. I suspect it's because of the longer filament path from the extruder to the hot end and nozzle, possibly because they needed that extra room to really pump the heat in for high flow PLA printing. That may have affected the ability to print flexibles. It can do it, but only really expect printing with semi-flex, not super flexible filaments. In my opinion, this machine is better suited to rigid filaments like PLA, which you can lay down at breakneck speeds. But let's address the elephant in the room. This isn't really a Soval 3D printer, is it? It's a Voron 2.4 that Soval has taken and made their own. That's not to devalue the work Soval has done in turning this machine into something that can be mass produced with injection molding and metal fabrication, but the Voron project is open source. Soval has relied on an open source project, the Voron project, in order to create this impressive 3D printer for an impressive price. And in line with what the printer is based on, the SV08 is also fully open source. This is in stark contrast to other brands that are going the route of closed and proprietary like Bamboo Lab, and it's something that is honestly really refreshing to see. And when servals say open source, they mean it. On their GitHub, you can download the firmware, even the engineering drawings for various sheet metal components and labels, but this, this is what really impressed me. 
What I have here is the entire assembly for the SV08 in step format. I can go in and isolate any component I like. I can take measurements to create custom modifications, and even use them as a basis for brand new components to be engineered for repair or for modifications to my machine. I challenge you, name another 3D printer released by a commercial company in the last few years that has its full CAD model published for you to use. Unfortunately, despite the open source nature of many aspects of this machine, there are still many parts in the SV08 that are unique and somewhat proprietary in the fact that you probably couldn't machine them yourself, such as the unique nozzle design and mainboard. In a quest for higher printing speeds, the E3D V6 threaded nozzle style that was so standard for so many years has largely been replaced by integrated nozzle and heat break designs, which leaves you at the mercy of the manufacturer to keep providing spares because nozzles are a consumable. But thankfully, in this case, Soval has all the spare parts available for really affordable prices. You can expect hundreds of hours out of a nozzle unless you print abrasives, which these aren't designed for, and they're only 24 bucks US for repair. So that's okay by me. Just make sure to grab some when you buy the machine because at the rate of 3D printers hitting the market at the moment, it's relentless. And I can't guarantee in a couple of years time if you try to buy parts that they're going to be still available. As it is, this is a large machine, but it doesn't have an enclosure. Now you can upgrade and opt to buy the enclosure from their website, but in my testing, it was done without one. So I only printed in PLA and TPU. You cannot print high temperature materials in an open frame machine. It just won't work. You need to keep the heat in and the ambient temperature high. The nozzles also aren't hardened. They may bring out hardened nozzles in future, but right now any carbon fiber or abrasive materials you try to print will instantly destroy the nozzle. So you cannot print stuff like carbon fiber nylon on the SV08 currently. I'm sure with an enclosure and some modifications to the extruder assembly, you probably could with not very little issue, but right now out of the box, no, you cannot print those materials. I only use this machine for PLA and a little bit of TPU, which as you saw, wasn't the best result. I would mainly stick to printing PLA on my SV08. Overall, I was really impressed with the SV08 from Soval. The build quality is really good, with just a few questionable design decisions, which may affect the longevity of this machine going forward. Much less than usual though, if I'm being honest, but I suppose Soval did have it easy, considering that this machine wouldn't exist without the Voron Project V2.4. But as long as Soval sticks to the open source agreements of that project, it's okay by me. But I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments below on what you think about this commercial machine existing based on that open source project. But it's the price of the SV08 that's really impressive. This machine comes in at $599 US or even less with the current early bird sales. It's an absolute steal for the functionality on offer and the larger than usual print volume. It's much more than you can get from similar offerings from companies such as Bamboo with the P1S, which will come out at the same price as the SV08 if you opt for the enclosure upgrade. And I guarantee you that is definitely not a coincidence. If you'd like to pick up the SV08, then you can find purchase links in the description below. And full disclosure, Soval sent me the machine free of charge for purpose of review, but all thoughts are my own. They're seeing this review at the same time as you guys, and they haven't been able to influence it in any way. If you found this video useful, then maybe consider subscribing to Maker's Muse, where it's my aim to empower your creativity through technology. And I look forward to seeing you again very shortly. Bye.